Hey everyone, my name is Alex Brinkley. I'm a composer, and in this video, I want to talk about how I've used Logic, VN Ensemble Pro, uh, some pretty big articulation sets, along with a little bit of Java code to create my orchestral scoring template. Um, specifically, I want to look at Berlin Woodwinds and uh, Spitfire's Chamber Strings and Symphonic Strings um, to demonstrate uh, this template. Um, and so, Let's just kind of dig, uh, dig right in. Uh, it's gonna be probably a little bit of a long video and uh, hopefully uh, not too confusing, and not too techy. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, please uh, reach out to me and ask. Um, so anyways, uh, as I said before, um, I'm working with Berlin Woodwinds here. And this includes all the different expansion libraries that uh, Berlin uh, or that Orchestral Tools has to offer. Um, and so the first thing that I did before I even touched Logic or I touched uh, VN Ensemble Pro was I went through and I made a list of all the different kinds of articulations that were offered from each, uh, each individual instrument. Um, and I sorted them by 12 because um, in a set of Capsule, which is their little graphic uh, or their, their user interface, um, you can only have 12 inter, uh, articulations at a time. However, some of these instruments come with more than 12 articulations. For example, the piccolo, um, uh, the uh, basic model comes with 16 different articulations. And so I want to be able to have um, all those articulations at my disposal um, in case I wanted to use them. And so uh, I kind of went through from, from longs to shorts and uh, I made a list of all the different ones. As soon as I got up through the first 12, I hopped over to channel two um, and kind of kept on going then and then went to channel three for the more aleatoric, uh, you know, flutters and extended techniques and then to channel four for that. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's how I ended up getting that uh, for all the different uh, articulations. Uh, from there, I went ahead and I started building the articulation sets, um, which you can see here, um, all the names correspond, and then you can see MIDI channel one within the key, sit, uh, key switch information that uh, triggers that specific articulation. It goes to channel two, channel three, channel four, and so forth. Um, so, Let's see. Uh, let's hear what that sounds like. Let's also pull over Logic so that we can see what's going on under the hood over here. That's the sustained immediate uh, romantic vibrato. If I were to change to channel two, you can see that channel one stops playing and channel two is playing. If we go to channel three for the flutter. You can see now I'm getting that on, over here on channel three. Um, so now, uh, one of the things, uh, one of the problems that comes with this is that uh, Logic does not do a good job at sending uh, CC data across multiple channels at the same time. But the solution there is to write um, a little bit of Java code using the Scripter plugin. Um, I found this code online uh, from LogicProHelp.com, and then I was able to mo uh, modify it. Um, but what this is essentially saying is, um, if I have a MIDI event uh, on uh, MIDI CC1, and the event uh, is on channel one, also send that data on channel two, three, and four. Um, so that's what uh, I'm doing here, and then that applies then for the expression, and the attack, and the release. Um, and so that's how all of that works. And this should also say super, or uh, super wins one, super wins one CC data. And then you want to hit run, and then uh, it'll tell you down below if it ran successfully or, or if you had errors. Um, and so what that allows me to then do is if I were to come over here and open up a couple of these guys, you will see that if I move one of the, the CCs, for example, the expression, that I'm uh, reading that uh, MIDI input data on uh, one, two, three, and four. So that is kind of the fundamental idea behind creating this Super Berlin Woodwinds uh, patch. Was it started there, and then I, I just sort of scaled it up. So I had um, uh, all the flutes, including the flute ensemble effects in the first one, alto flute through bass clarinet in the second one, and then the third the third one just had bassoons, contra bassoons, and then the low bassoon effects. Um, but the fundamental thinking there is uh, the same. Um, I guess two notes about this. Uh, note number one is that. Uh, you want to make sure that if you do have an instrument that you're transmitting uh, note uh, or a key switch info to change articulations across multiple channels, that the MIDI channel uh, setting under the track is set to all. Um, normally, when we build a multi output uh, instrument in Contact or VN Ensemble Pro, uh, the first uh, track is channel one, then it's channel two, channel three, and channel four, and so forth, like that. 
Um, but uh, we have to open that up to all uh, channels so that all the key switch, uh, all the key switches can work properly. Um, another thing is that um, the, one of the fundamental infrastructure things about Logic right now is that um, we are limited to one MIDI port per instrument. Um, most of the DAWs like DP or Cubase, um, you can use you know four or eight or more ports with 16 channels each. Um, but in Logic, we can't unless we are using an AU3 plugin. AU3 is uh, part of the new Vienna Ensemble Pro 7, uh, Vienna Ensemble AU3. Um, this is, yeah, one of the new features is that they made a plugin of AU3, which allows you to have up to some ungodly number of ports. <laughs> uh, 48 MIDI ports. Yeah, uh, so 768 MIDI channels per instance, uh, which is pretty insane. Um, the only downside there is that, uh, as I said, or this is still in beta. And so with that, um, any kind of uh, tempo change or time code information, for example, tempo sync delays inside of uh, Vienna Ensemble Pro or um, any kind of like, measured tremolos, those will not be able to uh, correspond between your host sequencer and Vienna Ensemble Pro. Um, so with that, that's why I've got one, two, three instances for my woodwinds up here along the top. Jump, uh, kind of changing gears a little bit to looking at the strings. Um, here's, I've got the chamber strings and the symphonic strings. Um, the process for building these was more or less exactly the same. Um, the only difference was uh, that um, you can send multiple uh, key switch changes to Spitfire's uh, instruments. Um, and so, for example, um, if I could open up the decorative techniques here, um, you can actually already see I've got staccato and one other articulation selected. Um, if I were to open up my articulation sets, you can see where it says long, uh, or long and stock and long and dig. These are triggering true articulations at once, which is uh, really great, especially for the, kind of the forte piano sound that, uh, that you can do by triggering staccatos and longs. Um, so that's that. Uh, another thing about this template that's pretty cool is that I've got um, a little bit of uh, or a MIDI region already uh, in every track when I open the DAW. And with that, it also has all the different kinds of MIDI parameters that I can change um, in uh, Vienna Ensemble Pro with the different contact instruments. So for example, um, I'm uh, able to change the legato speed and the portamento speed, attack time, vibrato depth, and, and so forth like that. So, no vid. More of it. Um, and I should uh, say that with this, uh, most of the Spitfire's instruments, they don't ship with um, the proper MIDI CC to correspond to the names inside of Logic. If you were to open up the uh, different uh, MIDI CC controls, you can see that they all have like, their own uh, individual name. But now I have to tell Contact, uh, or Spitfire specifically, um, what each one means. And so to do that, um, you want to right click on the different uh, edible parameters, for example, the dynamics, and say remove the learned one, and then whatever one you want it to be, you take it from the automation window, not the host automation, but on the right hand side, the MIDI automation. You want to drag that over so it populates. And then with that, you'll be able to change all these kind of different MIDI parameters. This mod uh, modulation, and you can see it's moving, and I've also included that little bit of script from before. So now it goes across all these different um, instruments where I have violin, uh, violins one. Um, so that's how I've done that. Um, with chamber strings specifically, there are four uh, contact instruments per playable instrument. For example, I've got uh, the legato performance, legato decorative, core, and uh, decorative techniques uh, for violin one. Um, and I've got you know violin one, violin two, viola, celli, bass, so five times four, total of 20 there. Um, 20 uh, instruments. Um, and so I've got that split between chamber strings high and chamber strings low in terms of instances here inside of Contact or uh, inside of Vienna Ensemble Pro. Um, I've also done this for Spitfire symphonic strings, um, but with symphonic strings, um, you only have legatos, core, and decorative techniques for each instrument. So I think that brings up to three times five, yep, 15. <laughs> Math all checks out. Um, but I've also done the same with. Um, populating it with a little MIDI region along with the different MIDI CC data that corresponds to that instrument specifically. 
So that about wraps it up. I've got um, my woodwinds and my chamber strings and, and some phonic strings routed across different MIDI channels, um, along with uh, some Java code to transmit MIDI CC across those different MIDI channels. And then I'm using key, switch, uh, key switches with specific MIDI channel messages to trigger all these different kinds of articulations. Um, and ultimately what this gives me is a template where I have one instrument per track, just like one player in the orchestra. Um, and I've also got this little uh, MIDI region already populated so that I know exactly what kind of CC parameters apply to this specific instrument. Um, if you have more questions about this, feel free to um, message me on Facebook or uh, shoot me an email, contact at alexbrinkley.com. Uh, I'd love to help you out. So thanks.